Welcome back to yet another insightful session. Now we understand that it is crucial to identify and address any bias when it comes to the recruitment process. It is crucial for those involved in the recruitment process are aware of the qualities and benefits applicants of various backgrounds can bring to an organization and ensure that they are allowing for a fair hiring process. Dismantling unconscious bias is the first step to a hiring process that promotes diversity. And now we know that an inclusive workplace also fosters a stronger sense of community and compassion. With this, we come to our first panel discussion of the day on the topic of the importance of diversity hiring in the corporate world. We'd like to thank our panelists, Kiran Jaktiani, Geeta Ramesh and Sharmila Thakur for taking out the time today and join us in what looks to be an incredible discussion. With that, I'd like to introduce our moderator for the session, Ms. Ruchi Alwalia, the Group Chief People Officer at Quest Corp. She's an astute HR leader and business partner with an MBA in HR and Marketing Certified Senior Professional in Human Resource from HRCI. Have 20 years of diverse HR experience, out of which over 10 years have been in leadership roles across various organizations like Quest Corp Limited, Eaton, Scania Commercial Vehicles, India Private Limited, Carl Zeiss India. A public speaker who is enthusiastic about diversity in the workplace, Ruchi has also won various accolades for the work that she has accomplished. I now invite Ruchi to take over and introduce the panelist for the next discussion. Thank you uh, so much, Anshul, for a lovely introduction. And good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the series on Organizational Lens on Diversity. Diversity in the workplace is not a trend to adopt or a target a business must achieve. Adopting diversity in the workplace goes beyond just being socially responsible. We have an innate understanding that it is a path that every business must follow because it leads to higher prospects and productivity. The first step to creating a diverse team is ensuring a recruitment process that generates a diverse candidate pipeline. Let's welcome our panelists on this note to understand more about diversity hiring. Let's welcome our first panelist, Ms. Sharmila Thakur. Uh, Sharmila has been a global human resource professional with 20 years of experience, multi-dimensional background in HR leadership roles across industries with a multi-geography presence. She had the opportunity of leading transformation initiatives like organization diagnostics, diversity and inclusion, global compensation, performance development program, leadership hiring, to name a few. Effectively, she's been practicing NLP and MBTI in developing high performance teams. She's a well-known speaker and represents Bureau Veritas at various reputed forums. Our second panelist, ladies and gentlemen, we have Ms. Geeta Ramesh. Uh, she's an HR leader with over 20 years of global talent acquisition and HR experience in technology and e-commerce industry. She specialized in recruitment strategy development and deployment, driving operational excellence, building, developing, leading high performing teams, designing and driving strategic talent initiatives in established firms as well as startups. She worked with highly reputed organizations like Cisco, Philips, Flipkart, and currently working with Athena Health as executive director talent. Our third panelist for today is Ms. Kiran Jaktiani. Kiran comes with over 15 years of experience in the recruitment domain. She believes that technology should be used, but as an enabler, as it can never replace human resource and is always seen connecting with people at a more personal level. Her passion for research and curiosity for learning led her to be a champion of diversity, equity and inclusion initiative within Z. She currently handles a dual responsibility, that of leading DEI 
as well as being the executive assistant to the president, HR and transformation. She's also a proud half marathoner who believes nothing replaces the fun of competing against yourself. I cannot wait to begin the discussion and understand the insights from such experienced industry leaders. So without any further ado, let's begin a panel discussion. So Sharmila, my first question uh, you know, is to you. Uh, I have uh, gone through the work you've done in diversity, equity and inclusion space, and it's impressive. Uh, you know, in various in, in throughout your tenure, uh, you know, in the HR field. So uh, how would you describe the way, you know, you think about diversity, equity and inclusion now, you know, how has it changed over time? Thank you, Ruchi. Uh, diversity definitely has changed over time. However, people really get confused that diversity and inclusion is one whereas it is two different aspects. Uh, if I talk about through the times, initially diversity was only considered having a women workforce. Gradually it has moved uh, from women to uh, so gender diversity to sexual orientation diversity. There has been race, ethnic, you know, uh, country of origin. You talk about um, national geographies, uh, global geographies, and you become a part of a uh, diverse workforce. It has initially, if you uh, talk about, and I'll give you an example, uh, considering to Indian mindset, uh, when the women started working, a typical Indian mindset was that the family needs the money. And women, is only stepping out of work because she has to support the family, whereas she was only supposed to do the household work. To a place that, uh, to a place now that women has to work, there is no other option. There is no other. Uh, there is no other. Uh, you know, mindset. A woman is equal. So there was a major issue, you know, initially, if you talk about, and we have heard about a lot of things, you know, uh, the title, just give you an example of Karina Kapoor Khan. Uh, now the title will come in the first and then the male title is coming. The pay gap, which was there between women and men, the it's still existing. I'm not saying that it is not, it's still existing, but, uh, but the gap is, reducing you know if you see initially in india uh, and i have worked in uh, us and australia as well as in uk everywhere it's the same uh, when we talk about male chauvinism uh, you know how is a woman much more more intelligent than me uh, when women are we're always more intelligent than uh, the other gender but the due credit was not given. But I'm not saying that the male are not intelligent, but that was the syndrome which was there. And uh, if you look into uh, a very big uh, example, I will give you of Madame Curie. Uh, the husband was a scientist and Madame Curie, uh, she invented uh, mercury and uh, the penicillin She's recorded. Albert Einstein, wife was also a scientist. Nowhere we hear about her, nowhere. And that is the difference I can talk about on diverse workforce. Diversity has really, really grown. Now people do understand that you belong to a place where everyone's opinion, values, their, their culture, tradition all has to be respected to get a really engaged work, uh, workforce you re need to understand how how much value can a diverse workforce can bring and that is the reason i'll give you an example of my own organization we are a 200 year old organization not 20 years back it was all fully male dominated organization 20 years back we started working on diversity and 10 years back we focused and i'm telling you when i joined bv and i'm giving an example of my indian operations 
I was the second female who joined the organization. Today we are 57 and I joined BV in 2014. So you can see what is the graph, how it has gone. Similarly, on the corporate, because we are a multinational, we have a CSR objective of 35% executive women leaders in the board, in the top management to have that. And that is the focus. The second thing which I can talk about diversity, uh, we, have, uh, we have never given this option that when you're posting the job, you know, an option that which kind of uh, profile or with male, female, or any other gender, you know, we don't discriminate. We say, if you have the talent, you're ready to come. And this really helps you retain effective talent, come up with wonderful innovation. Uh, people with diverse workforce think differently. There can be not one kind of a thing. So those syndrome where only male dominated workforce coming up with the same idea was dominating. You get diverse workforce and things have changed. So that I can uh, say uh, has added value. There is one which says McKinsey had shared a report in 2019 saying that 35% of your profitivity goes up if you have a diverse leaders and diverse workforce because strategies are defined on those ways. I think I can add this much on the diversity part. Great, Sharmila, and lovely to hear your views. And I kind of echo them, actually. You know, personally, also, when you were talking about what has changed, I was going back, uh, you know, yeah. to, you know, maybe 15, 20 years back, where I remember in my uh, family, uh, especially after marriage, uh, I was almost the first uh, woman to work meaning work in a corporate outside there were women who worked like you know at home tutoring and you know doing their business but um, and it was very different for me because you know I would be looked at uh, in a different light because you know people would attend functions the family functions and all and I would mostly miss out on them unless they were on Saturday Sunday or unless I've taken a leave for that um, and versus now when I see the recent marriages that are happening you know, it's a given. Nobody is asking, oh, that person, that, that that girl or that lady is working. It's like a given. If you are not working, is it right now a question mark? So very well said fact, there. In fact, Ruchi, uh, I remember, and sorry, I'm taking two, uh, one minute more. At that time when people, if they they wanted a working woman, she must be either working in a bank or working in a school. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that is the respectable job for the women. Anything else beyond that was bad. No, no, no night shift was allowed. Today, you see uh, the millennials and jillennials, everyone wants to work in all the shifts. They want to uh, really reap the benefit experience they want to have. You come up across women want to travel alone. Those days have gone where even you were not even asked, uh, allowed to wear a jeans uh, to an India to, uh, to the mindset of middle class has turned that you can wear, you know, strapless dresses, anything you want. And women can keep in their, her, my, her point of view saying that I don't agree to this. So we, we had an, uh, uh, so just to add, so long time back, if, if we talk about India, where women were treated equally to men, uh, in fact, she was more powerful than men. Uh, and you had that swimmer and all that thing to a place where you had no, um, uh, you know, no, uh, you couldn't even voice your opinion to a uh, to now the place I can say where women, uh, you know, the daughters, the mothers, well, their opinion is valued uh, as a leader, as a parent, you know, talk about any culture, you talk about anything. In any kind of um, job you are, your value is opinionated. And that really gives you the power saying that diversity is definitely setting in and changing the culture, the mindset of people. It's actually broadening the aspect. The horizon is now coming out and saying that, yes, everyone is equal. They have this, they can come up with innovative ideas, which even, uh, Sometimes, you know, you don't even think on those uh, 
spectrum and you come up with those ideas. Thank you. Yeah, Sharmila, totally agree. But uh, also on the pay front that you brought in, you know, though we've been having this policy of equal remuneration for like many, many years, but, you know, true uh, implementation of it, uh, you know, I think yet to come, but yeah, that's there and women in leadership. You know? So those were my takeaways. Uh, thank you for that, Sharmila. And we move on to Kiran now. Uh, with this question, Kiran. Um, so what is diversity for you, Kiran? Uh, thank you very much, Ruchi, for having me here. Uh, when I say diversity um, at the workplace or um, diversity in a team, for me, it is presence of different opinions, thoughts, ideas. Uh, when they are brought together and, you know, and arrived at an innovative solution, Basically, uh, diversity for me, in fact, would be about you, every single you, because I feel every single person is unique and has their own unique perspective. So every because every single person has gone through their own diverse uh, you know, experience, so everybody has their own perspective. Of course, diversity has different strands. So if we speak about gender, LGBTQ, veteran, you have cultural, and um, companies obviously are focusing more towards gender diversity uh, because one, um, we have in India only 26%, um, you know, the working population. In fact, uh, the um, World Bank uh, report recently suggested that this number has even gone down. It has, you know, to 19%, which is really shocking. And uh, which is why most companies, um, you know, the first focus is gender diversity. Um, secondly, not everybody even maintains the data beyond that, you know, so that's the, you know, starting point. And uh, we too have been focusing on that, but our focus has gone more towards retention than hiring. And how do you do that, Kiran? So um, for us, um, education um, has been very important. So upskilling, digital skills, uh, these are the, uh, you know, factors that uh, we have put in a lot lot of investments uh, you know towards uh, so we have created something called as the academy which is an ai powered uh, platform so it is a self driven learning platform and uh, apart from that we've also ran some pilot projects uh, which were to do with the uh, mentoring of women as well as leadership development so we've you know now bringing together the insights from these programs so that then we can, uh, you know, roll out company-wide programs. So that's where we are right now. Great, great to hear that, Kiran. And you made very valid points on, uh, you know, not only just adding more women to the workforce, but, you know, truly, uh, uh, truly making the diverse workforce, whether it's gender or, you know, other kinds of diversity heard, you know, how do you make them their better version and then you spoke about training upskilling uh you know to have this inclusivity so great on this note i'd like to move to geeta uh, geeta while we talked about retention we talked about upskilling and recruitment i'd still go back on both the topics uh, you know we do come across conscious and unconscious biases right so how are companies in your opinion you know how are they striving to eliminate the most common conscious and unconscious biases that we have uh, and right from the recruitment stage itself and what do you think is the role of technology uh, you know in, in doing so thanks Rishi. i think um, i mean it's been very interesting journey in the last 20 years uh, my journey in the hr in the technology industry uh, seeing how diversity and inclusion has evolved you know at all stages right from hiring to development to retention, right? The entire talent cycle. So it's been very interesting journey. So I could so much echo with what Sharmila was saying, what Kiran was saying, right? Uh, I think from my generic observations and also from my conversations with my peers in the industry, I think what I've seen is that, you know, to eliminate unconscious biases in the hiring, organizations are thinking actually broadly about how do they simplify and standardize their, standardize their hiring processes, right? For example, if you take the hiring process, the first step, uh, I think, is building awareness, right? So a lot of times, you know, 
uh, a simple uh, phenomenon where the interviewers are unaware of the do's and don'ts in the interviews from the standpoint of uh, diversity and inclusion. I don't know if ask, what questions could you not ask, what could you be implying while you ask certain set of questions. So very nearly they could ask certain questions that could work it mutually, right? To the hiring process. So basically, I think to begin with, the first very important step that organizations are taking today are, you know, awareness trainings that's the first important step and you know i think this just helps employees to recognize their unconscious biases okay. to reflect on the biases that may be uh you know that may be impacting their hiring decision so i think this is the first very important step um that i have been seeing and i think there are a lot of there's a very good partner ecosystem also that exists where you know we have very good partners organizations that partner with you to build these awareness of various forms of diversity like for example it could be gender it could be age it could be you know lgbt class it could be on the differently able to talent pool so basically i think for everything there are different organizations that help partnering with you and deliver those very professionally designed training so it's it's just available there to buy right it's not a big challenge now the second important step in my opinion or i have seen is that the organizations are also focusing on creating gender neutral job description so job description is the first document an applicant gets to see right and that helps them form the first impression of the company's culture how inclusive the culture is you know so that i think it's a very important first step that organizations are really focusing on right so um, basically every certain word uh, and choices of some of those words may have a very strong impact on the application applicant pool right so i think to be able to attract diverse set of candidates we should make sure uh, you know we are eliminating any stereotypical masculine language or masculine flavor on our job descriptions right and for example if you are really hiring in very large scale and it becomes challenging to kind of uh, build so much and create so much i think to your second question right technology there are several software programs today that highlight uh, stereo stereotypically gendered words and uh, and there are also softwares that help blind the resumes blind the process basically so they just remove the name and any words that indicate the uh, you know sexuality or gender of a person right so basically i think uh, there are several software programs that help organizations to these today right and then the next very important step is the interview process so first one was building awareness second one was making sure your job descriptions are gender neutral and then the third obvious and the most important step again is how will you make sure your interview process is also uh, helping minimize those biases so basically i think a lot of organizations today are focusing on the factors that have a direct impact on the performance versus just having their interviews uh interviewers collect generic information i think they train their interviews to make sure they are sticking to the factors that actually impact the performance and not going very broad and you know not going uh, to collect information on topics that are sensitive in nature that are you know that are unrequired for your uh, uh for hiring right so basically i think that is something that organizations are doing and i think a lot of uh, organizations are also training their interviewers ensuring there are some mandatory um, trainings that are launched for the leadership so that you know the overall culture or the overall experience that the candidate gets in the interview process is really really you know it it shows how inclusive the culture is right some i mean this way the candidates are also able to relate to uh, the culture of the organization and then they feel like yeah i belong here so if if i get an offer i would like to take this opportunity and work here with this organization so i think that's a third important step and last but not the least i think another very important step organizations are taking today is around setting diversity goals right when you're setting diversity goals um you may these may not be black and white right some divisions may be already doing very well on diversity and some divisions in your organization may be doing poorly on diversity and then while you're setting these goals you're not wanting to you want to ensure that you're not putting any specific group at a disadvantage also right so you want to make sure everyone is getting an equal employment opportunity right so you are being an equal employment opportunity provider there so i think uh you know from that standpoint organizations are looking data by divisions 
um, they are looking at um, you know um, what goals can we set how and end of the year they're also tracking through those to see how each of those divisions have been doing in terms of achieving those goals so i think these are the four uh, large steps that i have seen organizations large and very objective steps that organizations have been taking to ensure they're having an appropriate representation of diversity across their organizations Geeta, I, I mean, the I would like to ask you a follow-up question because you touched upon, uh, you know, interviewing skills of the interviewers. You touched upon technology, having a gender-neutral JD, uh, you know, and I'm using technology to help there. Uh, my next question I'd like to point out to you again, which is a little similar, um, is, uh, you know, we do, you mentioned about goals, uh, you know, having diversity goals across. Uh, one of the... Uh, ways to of course achieve these goals uh, you know is through hiring you know having an influx of diverse people because first if you have then you can you know kind of build it up retain develop grow uh, you know and engage them but how do you really uh, what's your advice on building a pipeline of diverse candidates and what are some of the challenges that you face uh, in implementing them in implementing these Sure. Thanks, thanks for that question again, Richie. I think this is a good follow-up to make. I think um, uh, from the time I've been here with Atin, I, think I know that we, diversity and inclusion has always been a very important priority for the organization, right? So there has always been that focus, right? And um, across the globe, you know, in our other geos, we have different forms of diversity, um, like, you know, race, ethnicity, and all those other various forms in the other geos. But when it came to India, we, we were primarily focusing on gender a couple of years ago. But I think we expanded our forms of diversity in the last few years, where we are looking at, um, you know, where we are looking at uh, how do we really support women returning from career field? How do we invest in that talent field? How do we mentor and help them bring back to work, bring them back to work, right? So that's one talent segment that we are focusing on. Then we are also work, we have also been working on how do we attract LGBT to this talent? In the last few years, that talent segment has really picked up in the technology industry as well. And we have very good diversity uh, talent pool in that segment that we can really tap into, right? So we don't want to be behind on that. So we started working on that trend. And then, you know, there is so much of talent pool available in the different PMU talent space also. So we, were, we wanted, we started expanding our focus on, you know, diversity hiring into the, that segment also, right? So again, we have in the last two years, we've conducted year on year, we have conducted uh, with, um, you know, interviewer trainings. We partnered with external specialist agencies on some of these uh, matters. And then, you know, we, we put all our interviewers through a mandatory training on some of these aspects of diversity. How can you be more inclusive? And those training sessions are very interactive that help the employees and the interviewers and the hiring managers and our leaders to reflect uh, through what biases they may be going to. So they were very interactive in nature. We had workshops. And so I think there were good training sessions and uh, we feel like that, that really helped, right? And I think the other thing that we did in terms of uh, building the overall inclusive culture is we have mandatory inclusive leadership trainings that are mandatory for every people leader to take up, right? And we work with some reputed partners again uh, on this space, you know, to get those, these online courses um, and we drive the participation, we drive, we, we drive, we make sure that, you know, all these uh, courses are taken, completed by everyone. So for an employee to be an interviewer, they should have taken some of these courses, right? And then, and for uh, for most of the old interviewers, we make sure they are doing a refresh from here on here. And for any new uh, employee who wants to be a part of the interviewer, panel um, we make sure that there's a new interview or induction process where we make sure they are also going through this so you know when they are typically a brand ambassadors talking to an external candidate so we want to be sure that you know they are all equipped in game to the present organization in the right line right so that's that's one thing we have been religiously doing in the in the space of awareness right then coming to job descriptions i think this is job descriptions and job ads is something that uh, we make sure we are working with our global teams to ensure they are generic, they meet all the norms, and uh, you know they are the candidate experience is uniform. Whether they apply for a job in Atlanta or for, whether they apply for a job in Boston or Austin or Bangalore, Chennai, Pune, wherever, right? So basically, we have standardized our job descriptions, we have standardized our job ads, and I think that also has really helped us 
help put our brand in a good light in terms of uh, being an equal employment opportunity provider, right? So that's that's the second thing that that's the second actionable step that we have taken in that space, right? Now the third one to your specific question on how have we been implementing um, uh, this whole thing and how have we been getting the uh, diversity talent pool, what, what have we been doing in terms of sourcing? So firstly, I think one of the goals that we have for a recruiting team is that, you know, we make sure 30% of the talent pool that is presented for any position is diversity talent pool, right? And to make sure we are getting a good representation of diversity pipeline into the pipeline for any role, we uh, we work with different partners that specialize in those spaces, whether it's LGBT class or you know other segments that right? uh, women returning from several breaks or gender diversity. So we work with our partners to get uh, different set of partners to get some of the talent pool. And then we also run uh, time to time we run sourcethons where we sit and dedicate a focus day. To make sure we are building that 30% pipeline um, or 30% of the pipeline as a kind of first pipeline, right? Or as a we kind of see how we're doing in terms of pipeline, and time and again we do that to make sure we are building a sufficient uh, amount of diversity into the overall talent suite, right? So that's one thing that we do. And I think then uh, other thing that we do is you know we for campus hiring we make sure we're visiting uh, only women's only engineering colleges, right? We hire. Uh, when we that is both age diverse and gender diversity, is what we try to achieve from our university hiring program, right? And then I think we also mentor. We have a women in technology forum that's very active. We mentor uh, some women returning from career breaks on certain platforms, and we, that way we build a proactive talent pool that will, that can be injected into our future pipelines whenever they're ready, right? So. Uh, we also run training programs for women returning from career breaks. We run returnship programs. All these programs feed into the talent pipeline and add diversity uh, into our talent pipeline, right? So that's one thing. And I think um, uh, for every inter, if for every diversity candidate in interview stage, we make sure there's a diversity panel in the in the overall interview team, right? So. When you do a debrief, there, there is enough representation or adequate representation of diversity interviewers in, in the interview pool of the diversity candidate, right? So that balances out any biases, you know, when we do a debrief, we have sufficient representation of diversity interviewers also in the process, right? So that's something that we do. These are a couple of things that uh, we've been doing in later stages. And in terms of setting goals, right, we, for, we have in the last one year, we've been working on setting core teams for each division, where those core teams work with the divisional leaders to set what is the right target or a right goal in terms of diversity for their organization for the next year. And then we track to those goals, right? We meet periodically and we track to those goals to see how we're doing on some of those goals. And this is a global initiative that we make sure we're doing our chief diversity officer is a part of some some of those initiatives she leads some of those initiatives so basically i think it's very very um there is a lot of focus on that right and uh in terms of the challenges so there was another question that you asked in terms of the challenges i think the challenges that we typically face is that you know in uh in the in some, some for some of the skill set the talent pool availability in diversity segments in the market itself is low, right? You do not get, so there are some niche skill sets that you have to be hired for and sometimes you really don't have sufficient talent pool available there. So then I think you'll have to forget about buy model and put into build model, where you run some of these programs, you know, LND programs, or you know, you look at your internal talent pool, you see, you know, if you have to see the succession plan, grow internal talent there, you know, uh, or you know, how, how to ensure we are retaining some of the diverse talent pool that we have in house. So, Geeta, thank you first of all for comprehensively covering, uh, you know, the talent pool pipeline and the challenges. And you rightly said, you know, it requires focus and persistent efforts. Whether it is, you know, involving the leadership, setting goals, measuring them, uh, you know, year on year, month on month. Whether it's training or looking at the diverse pool, uh, you know, of return uh, back to work. Uh, you know, mothers or women returning back to work or campus, uh, you know, hires and 
internship program. So thank you for covering that. Sharmila, my next question is to you because we kind of dealt a lot into now recruitment and pipelining and Gita has nicely covered it. Let's talk about when they come, uh, when we have the diverse workforce at, at offices, at organization. You know, what do we do to ensure that, you know, there is an environment, there's, we fostered an environment of inclusivity uh, and equality. Um, so what are some of the ideas you can kind of put it out on the table? Yeah, so um, thank you. Uh, and uh, Gita has definitely uh, put in, uh, you know, wonderful points and I go to those points. Uh, if I talk about when you onboard a diverse workforce, the first thing which you should keep in mind is inclusion is not a matter of political correctness. It is the key to growth. And uh, when you have that in your mind, uh, you know, as Deepa was, uh, Deepa was mentioning about unconscious and conscious biasness. Uh, so you, you might hire people from different uh, diverse background. But if you don't listen to them, if you don't value to their uh, their thought processes, if you don't embrace, uh, you know, what their culture is, there can be different cultural beliefs. And ultimately, you have to echo and you have to have a coexistent, you know, you can you can have different beliefs. Ultimately, you have to respect. So in BV, uh, we have a core value is open and inclusiveness. You have to have an open um, communication uh, you need to uh, come up with a platform which help uh, everyone to raise their voice uh, to uh, register what they feel and in a team you know they should be given the respect so respect for individual uh, listening to their uh, you know values um, even their ideas and everything and if uh, if you really pick those ideas and try to implement, you actually don't have to do too much on employee engagement because you're ultimately listening to your people. And um, I'll give you an example in BV. We have a diversity and inclusion survey. We have a B vocal. It's where we listen to our employees and we uh, definitely also recognizes of those people who have come up with out of the box innovation solution. We mentioned if we are implementing that, we mentioned this solution was provided by this person with and so and so. Did. You're acknowledging, you're recognizing, ultimately people feel that yes, it, they are part of the organization. Wonderfully, Gita mentioned about, you know, uh, the recruitment cycle and how do you, um, how do you train, mentor and help, uh, uh, women come back to work. I'll give you another perspective. When when I joined Bureau Veritas, uh, uh, you know, we decided that we will go to the interior of India to find the talent. And I can tell you, I went to a place which was only 20 kilometers from the Pakistan border. And it was all, uh, the school was all, everyone, uh, they were uh, you know, wearing a burqa and the females were there. And we had such wonderful talent from there and we were able to hire people from there. Similarly, places as very remote as uh, Nexalite areas, but then you have to come up with, with solutions which will be beneficial for your organization. Diversity, you know, a lot of time when we say, oh, we, we have diverse workforce, but if you do not include those, their thought process, uh, in your policy making, you know, drafting certain things which which has their values and ideas, you cannot work on it. I'll give you an example here, Richie. Uh, this is 2003, and uh, and we 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 were supposed to visit Japan, and you know, I did a lot of research the sales team of my, my team uh, sales team did not take that into account. And they went there and uh, we were selling a software. And when the sales manager, the VP sales was not ready to listen to the, the cultural difference. And we made, we actually had a lot of loss because 
when they they quoted a price the japanese not reacted so the vp sales said he's not uh, they are not fine with the price he reduced the price when they came out uh later on he came he came to know that japanese don't react to the prices whatever you mention they will just listen and later on they will come back to you and but that was in 2003 even they have learned now to negotiate i'll give you another example hybrid work policy we are training all our managers because ultimately it's there now insight you are to gain more out of sight you lose a lot and how do you become unconsciously unbiased for the people who are working from hybrid model so those training have to be given and you have to continuously as an hr innovate on your diversity and inclusion very well said shamila and i liked you know the anecdotes that you bring it just stays along uh, you know and uh, you didn't talk about only uh, gender diversity or any forms of diversity you brought in very good perspectives on culture nationality uh, and uh, the biggest takeaway i would say is uh, listening to people you know irrespective of anything that is when they feel more inclusive so can't agree more on this uh sharmila and with this i have a question for all of you now and maybe we start with kiran uh, uh so uh, what in your opinion is diversity hiring so for me uh, diversity hiring is hiring based on merit with special care taken to reduce bias um in fact to get diverse talent you also need to be present in diverse places as well as advertise in diverse places um, that is maybe in groups and communities where your talent is um, actually based um and lastly to make uh, you know diversity hiring successful i think it is very important that you train your recruiters on unconscious bias um you also need to train them on all the diversity initiatives that are taking place inside your organization because finally they are the ones who are uh, you know the face of the organization with the prospective candidates they are the gatekeepers so it's important that they understand what's happening around the uh, diversity so that's about great 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 and and kiran has set the momentum for uh, you know others to respond to so maybe you know sharmila do we do you want to talk about it uh, you did speak about diversity but maybe we can hear you more on what is in your opinion diverse hiring so if you really ask me uh, you know india being a very diverse uh, cultural hub the different background with different languages different culture we are in a way we are always supporting the diverse work work hire you know workplace and you are hiring different uh, people from different background as i mentioned you know ultimately uh, we really need to be even when we talk about diverse hiring we have to be unconsciously unbiased because we are we are we are hiring from different background we are embracing them we are including them in our work culture and we are building the culture of your, our organization so everyone we hire one thing which we have to keep in mind is that how inclusive we are how open we are and how do we embrace them in the organization and that is the way you build your organization culture you create a lot of sustainable growth you retain people because you are also trying to bring in innovation by different by hiring a diverse workforce so that is what uh, my take would be uh, as i i'll just add on here in bv we do not publicize any job stating uh, this is specifically for lgbtq we don't because for us every job deserves anyone who is uh, who is trained have the competency have the skills they can apply we do not go into sexual orientation we do not uh, you know do any kind of uh, bifurcation on any ethics and you know ethnic group all those so worldwide we are practicing this and for me that is diversity in the workplace 
Absolutely. I mean, the moment you call it out, it becomes anyways excluded. So how yes. do you exclude that? Yeah. So agree to that, Sharmila, very truly. And I think it's also a signal of progressive culture that the organization has started to think the same way. Right. So thank you. On that note, over to you, Geeta. In your world, what is diversity hi uh, hiring? You know? More than in my world, I think in my opinion, uh, I think diversity hiring is the first step towards building a very inclusive and diverse workplace culture. I think the feed that comes from there, uh, you know, after that, uh, drives, um, you know, how well you are able to bring diverse minds onto the table, how you are able to drive innovation with diverse, you know, that this diverse perspectives bring into the organization, right? So I think. It's not just, um, I think it's not just, uh, I think it's a very important gateway to also foster, drive and foster innovation in your organization, right? So that's one. And I think also to simply define, uh, in my opinion, diversity hiring is uh, for is where companies design a hiring process that provides an equal opportunity for candidates of diverse sexual orientation, gender, race, and other backgrounds, right? To take part in the interview process and get recruited. So to Sharmila's point and to Kiran's point, I think ultimately, you know, we will have the best candidate get the job. So it's not so much about hiring, hiring, it's about building a talent pool or a talent slate for a role that involves a mix of candidates coming from diverse backgrounds. So now you bring a talent slate that has candidates, some diverse that diverse segments and diverse back backgrounds coming to the table and then you know everyone get to participate in the process and then the best get candidate gets selected so most of the times i do believe in setting targets for building your pipeline but not you know end of the day it will have to obviously result into a good diversity mix of candidates uh, you know hires also for you but i think you know in my opinion it's more to do with building a diverse candidate slate you know, that can eventually lead to hiring diverse candidates. So it's not just about, you don't really, to, to share less point, you just, you just don't categorize some jobs for uh, for some diversity segment and some for the others. So that's not how we do it. I think everyone should have an equal opportunity to come to the table, interview with us, and then the best candidates get selected. So in my opinion, that's the way we can have diverse Okay, um, so I think, uh, and again, this is an open question uh, to all of you. Since you brought in, all of you brought in the point on training, leadership, uh, you know, awareness, removing unconscious bias and things like that. What would be one advice, you know, as HR leaders, you'd like to give it to, you know, the leadership team uh, when it comes to diversity, equity and inclusion? So I'll, uh, I'll go with that. Uh, so basically, see, DEI is a journey. Okay, so I think uh, even Gita mentioned that, that. And you cannot do everything at one go. So, but there has to be continuous improvements, you know, so it has to be done every day. You have to keep the efforts going on. And um, um, diversity cannot thrive if you don't have inclusion. Uh, so, definitely, inclusion is very important. but there is also an aspect that inclusion is a choice. Um, definitely, it's a voice which needs to be respected, valued. But at the end of the day, it's a choice. Now, it depends on the leader. Like, I, I want to quote this example because it's, um, you know, there was a leader who's uh, spoken about it in a very easy manner. It's like, um, if you invite somebody home for dinner, and you have somebody who's veg, you have somebody who's non-veg, you have somebody who's a vegan, um, you feel a little uncomfortable, right? But what do you do? You actually probably call, you find out, and then you make a meal which makes sense to all. So similarly, if a leader has different kinds of people, he probably feels uncomfortable sometimes, you know, to deal with them, but that's a choice that he needs to take, gather all the perspectives, and come up with a solution. Um, sometimes people do feel that this might be a little slow process, but teams thrive if you know all our perspectives are taken into account. Is what all I can say. Yeah, very well said, uh, Kiran. And that example is great. Uh, you know, it's the same point what Sharmila also brought in. Uh, it's also a business case, right? Uh, if if you if the 
the the person would have listened to the teams below maybe they would have uh, you know got the order uh, you know from the japanese company so uh, sharmila any last few words from you on this yeah thank you and kiran i love the uh, love the example it was wonderful uh, i agree to uh, what kiran said and i echo this ultimately uh, the top leaders have to derive this you know they are the one who are the drivers lead by example can only let their n minus 1 uh, their managers to practice that and as it as it's a journey the result cannot come into one or two days it takes time uh but if you have as uh, studies have shown if you have a diverse workforce definitely your profitability goes up definitely your image and goodwill in the organization uh, uh, organizations in the business world goes up uh, i'll give an example of my organization so uh, in bv uh, we have as i mentioned we have a csr objective for uh, inclusion and diversity and we have to raise it to 35% by uh, 2025 and currently we are sitting on 21% and uh, and that if we do not derive it from the top level if we do not uh, practice it on the uh, on the senior level definitely the junior level will always think you know uh, why do i have to get it i can get the same like minded in it industry let's take an example in the night shift and i am talking about you um, uttar pradesh where there is a new mandate women not to work after 7 pm and you you want and on the other side you're saying we have to treat women equally now the men will say all the benefits typical you know in the uh, in the bus give seat to the women because it is courtesy the guy can be sick uh, the woman is healthy and he wants to sit down you have to use your split mindset to come up with the solution so as i said uh, ultimately it has to be practiced and it has to be driven from the top well said charmila and i i go your thoughts here even in manufacturing uh, you know we have the same issue beyond 7 you can't work and then we want more women uh, participating in the workforce but there are always solutions and work arounds uh, you know in a compliant way so thank you for your thoughts charmila and geeta what do you have to say on this i think that firstly i really echo with what kiran and uh, charmila have said on this um Uh, definitely but not not to repeat those and to add to what has already been said i think uh, in my opinion a lot of organizations tend to focus a lot or rather over index on diversity when it comes to only hiring in my opinion i think the organization has to focus on the diversity uh, through the talent management lens so how do you really hire diverse candidates how do you develop direct diverse candidates into internal roles how do you build your future pipeline of diverse candidates for the interview roles how do you um, retain diverse candidates right retention will also of course involve how do you foster a culture of diversity where people coming from diverse backgrounds feel included feel like they are heard is heard you know and you know how do you foster a culture that really helps with your retention as well and basically you know that way taking a look at The overall talent management like I think from a diverse and inclusion lens I think is very important these days I see a lot of organizations really taking big big targets on the hiring front but then they try to kind of they fizz out a little bit when it comes to the other parts of the talent management so I think there is there needs to be an equal focus um, on on the parts of it sure thank you so much Geeta Kiran and Sharmila for those uh it was a wonderful conversation with all of you and uh, i've realized a few things uh that irrespective of where you are in your journey in different organizations or even at home uh you know there's still so much to do and uh, we'll collectively have to come together to ensure that you know each organization is diverse uh, uh equi- with equity and inclusion uh we can't emphasize enough on uh it being an agenda on the top 
for not only the HR fraternity, but all the people managers and the leadership. So it also has to be role modeling done from the top management. Uh, there has to be enough of it, education, awareness and constantly, because the more you get diverse population, I think the more opportunity you have to, uh, you know, have that awareness on unconscious biases. There's technology in play. So, you know, your hiring needs are satisfied using technology. So um, thank you so much, all of you, for taking out the time. And I love the conversation. It was so uh, you know, insightful. I have made a lot of notes. Uh, and definitely Quest is also on the same journey of having one of the most balanced force uh, workforce uh, across the world. We are aspiring to be in the, you know, uh, having 50% of uh, women in the workforce while having an, a totally inclusive uh, you know, workforce, not only from a gender perspective, but all kinds of diversity. So thank you so much uh, and lovely interacting with you. Uh, once thanks again. so much for having us thank you. here, uh, Ruchi, and uh, thank great connecting with thank you. Thank you, Ruchi. Thank you, Geeta and Sharmila. It was really nice uh, catching up, knowing you all. And uh, thank you so much. Likewise, thank you all. Likewise, thank you very much. It was wonderful connecting with you guys. Yes. And thank hearing you. to your thoughts. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. I'd like to thank all panelists and the moderator for such an incredible discussion. I'm sure that everyone in attendance greatly benefited from the conversation with such a range of unique insights. I'd like to thank Ms. Ruchi for moderating the event. Gear up for many more such sessions.